Hey everybody, my name is Eric Knight. Welcome back to the Natatorium Knowledge channel. I'm with Arenda Technologies and today we are going to be talking about indoor pool dehumidification, air physics, and basically how an indoor pool's airborne environment is actually treated. And uh, as always, we try to get the most qualified subject matter experts on this channel. And today we are honored to have the president of Desert Air Dehumidification Company, Keith Corson. Keith, thank you for being here. Good morning, Eric. I'm pleased to be here. Well, thank you so much. So I'm going to just get started. Um, tell me what is the difference between an air conditioner and a dehumidifier? Well, that's actually a, a, a very misunderstood uh, concept. So let me start off by the air conditioner and kind of use the, the acronym HVAC, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. And that is really the descriptor of what we call an air conditioner for a commercial application. It is taking return air, conditioning it by either heating or cooling. And then it brings in the code ventilation through the unit. And uh, that's well, hold on. It. What is what is what is code ventilation? You mean outside air? I mean outside air. Ventilation is okay. the proper term for how much uh, air would need to be brought in based on certain codes, building codes that exist for the different uh, municipalities. Okay. So that that's what the air conditioner does, and it is it is controlled off of temperature. And that's really the key thing to understand. You, you can picture a heater or an air conditioner. It just says, am I too cold or am I too hot or am I just right? And if yeah, I'm that's just like right- that's like in my house. I yeah, just, exactly. Just, my climate basically depends on the temperature. And on a hot summer day, there is humidity that is taken into account. Correct. And and that's a byproduct of, of air conditioning is is depending on, on what the conditions of the air coming back to the the uh, internal coils, it can and will remove air conditioning. If you go down to your air conditioner uh, in your home, you have to drain it to a, a drain connection. There's always going to be a little bit of moisture dripping out of it. And that's the byproduct of the little bit of dehumidification an air conditioner does. Now let's go into that uh, indoor pool room. What are the design differences from a temperature point of view on your home and on the pool that you swim at? Your home, you're going to have 72 degrees, 74 degrees, and then general term relative humidity is down around 50%, 45%. You're comfortable. And that's the day in and day out conditions. And in wintertime, the heater comes on to make sure it stays up there. In an indoor pool room, we're at 82, 85, 86 degrees and we're up at 60% relative humidity. There is a sizable element difference between those environments. Your home is at a dew point that's going to be down around a 50, 52 degree dew point. Your indoor pool's standard environment is going to be up at a 65, 68 degree dew point. And most so people- hold on, hold on. You're going, you're, you're over my head now. We're going to talk about dew point in another video because that's a, another big question. So let, let's try to, let's try to keep it a little basic. So what I'm hearing, and I want you to correct me where I'm wrong. Uh, my house doesn't have a fraction of the moisture in the air that a pool has. Is that correct? That would be an accurate statement. Okay. So a dehumidifier is not drawn just on temperature. It's actually focused on moisture removal. Correct. And in, in an indoor pool, it runs more of the time to remove the moisture than it does to turn on for cooling or to turn on for heating. And that's the big operative difference is, is that it's the relative humidity that is driving the compressors to turn on and off to remove the moisture to maintain the mm -hmm. environment. And well, well, these systems are th these systems are so robust. I've been on roofs of natatoriums. I've been, I've been to hundreds of natatoriums and I've seen them. I mean, some of them are bigger than my truck. I mean, these yeah, are massive they, systems. It's a great point, Eric. And let's come back to your your home, your residential home. Um, if you've got a 2,000, 2,500 square foot home, your air conditioner is going to be in a, a rating, a nominal size of two to three tons. And that's going to be pretty much across the board. When you look at a pool, even if we talk about a small hotel pool, we're starting off at eight 10 tons as the starting point. And then as you go up to your swim clubs for your uh, major meets and that, we're talking in the hundreds of tons. So the capacity okay, in tons, this, tons of what? Tons of refrigeration. 
It's a technical term, but it's a it's a nominal <laughs> yeah. way of sizing. Keep in mind, my audience is a lot of engineers, and they probably know what you mean. But it's also a lot of pool owners or people considering right. getting dehumidification, a replacement. So the people watching this channel may not know what tons is. So let me try to distill this a little bit. And again, correct me where I'm wrong, because I genuinely don't really understand this stuff. Air conditioners, like for your home, are based on temperature. And as a byproduct of correcting the temperature, there is some moisture removal. Yes? Yes. A pool dehumidifier, its primary function is removing moisture from the air. And a byproduct of that is temperature change. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Okay, it, 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 it's, it's hard. And and uh, one of the things that is the major difference, if you physically look at uh, the two systems, when when we talk about air conditioning, we cool the air down and we deliver this cold air. Um, right. In a in a pool room, as you're dehumidifying, you're still cooling the air, but yet we have this 85 degree environment. We don't want it take that 85 degree environment and make the swimmers be coming out of the pool at 75 degrees or 72 degrees. Yeah, you're yeah, shaking I, your head. I can, you can already I can vouch as a swimmer. I, when the air temperature goes down too much, my teeth will chatter because evaporative cooling. Hey, I know that term from you. So evaporative cooling on my skin, it's cold and it may it be is. 80 degrees on deck. But if that water's 84, here's what I've noticed. I've seen a pool steam. Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of evaporation. By the way, we have another video on evaporation with Keith. We just haven't filmed it yet at the time of this. This is the first one. So we're going to get to that. Um, okay, so, so again, well, one of the big differences is that we we don't want to overcool the air. So we have right. in in uh, the the technical terms, we call it a hot gas reheat coil. But in your air conditioner at home, you have this element that sits outside and the right. heat is taken from the inside and pushed Blown to out and blown out and that's called a, a condenser but it's outdoors we have another one of those because we also have the outdoor one because we do want to have the ability to cool the space if yeah. the solar uh, you know builds up the heat during the day on a hot summer day but we also have another one of these condensers which we call that hot gas reheat coil where we reheat using all the reclaimed energy from the cooling and moisture removal process and return the air back at a warm condition so while we're pulling moisture out of the air, we don't overcool the space. This is the, the separation between temperature and humidity control. Our goal is first to look at the humidity control and then using this hot gas reheat coil, we can either turn it on and return the heat to the unit or turn it off and reject the heat outdoors like a quote unquote air conditioner like in the summertime you want to cool it down because it's 100 degrees in charlotte today where i live and those well thanks to covid not many indoor pools are open right now but let's say they were um they're gonna have to reject a lot of heat but in the winter time it'll get into the 30s here and it, you're in wisconsin i mean yep. you're you get sub-zero temperatures so you're saying there's a lot of heat in the air that's circulating in the pool i know the the pool temperature alone is hot so i assume there's temperature there you're saying that you're dehumidifier system can reclaim a lot of the energy or the heat in that air and repurpose it and bring it back into the pool is that what i'm hearing correct that's what you're hearing okay in, in can an air conditioner do that uh not a standard air conditioner no okay so it, but here's why i asked that question i don't mean to cut you off because we could talk for hours an air conditioner is not appropriate for an indoor pool no no not at all air volume uh, and, and number of air turns that the space requires. Um, an air conditioner is seeking a goal of, of just trying to cool. So they size the, the airflow and, and all that to keep the cost down. And mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that a lot of contractors who have never seen a pool dehumidifier, whether that be at a hotel level or up on that big, large natatorium that you're talking about, when they open up the box for the first time, they see these pipes going everywhere. And this isn't what the standard air conditioner, uh, okay, what are you all trying to do? And this is these different modes of operation that we must continue to dehumidify even though the air is not calling for cooling. We must dehumidify even though the air is needing to, to cool. And all of that added into this box, including reclaim coils to bring heat to the pool water. Because mm -hmm. if I can 
grab that energy that came from the pool and return it to the pool rather than reject it outdoors, I help pay for it in an operational cost savings that doesn't exist with a standard air conditioner. And, and so that's really why when you ask the question, everybody says, well, it's more expensive. Yeah, uh, you know, it has a huge engine in it. So why does that turbocharged car cost more than the four cylinder? Because I got a lot more in it. All right, so um, for the potential pool owners out there, or maybe you are an operator and you're wondering why a actual properly sized pool dehumidifier is so much more expensive, it is a lot more robust, but it actually will pay for itself in energy savings. I personally have seen a lot of natatoriums, a vast majority of them do have a pool dehumidifier, so I'll say that, but I have seen several, I mean, at least a dozen that had air conditioners on it and they had nothing but problems. So is that, a, are they rejecting enough air? Are they bringing enough outside air on air conditioners, you think? Or what, where uh, are they falling short? Is it just moisture removal? It is, the, the mo moisture removal is the key, is it's it, an air conditioner, has been sized to cool the air at the most efficient way. And these are some of the Department of Energy codes. A dehumidifier is sized to remove moisture. And those are design elements internal to the machines themselves. So an air conditioner has a rating for cooling. A dehumidifier has a moisture removal efficiency for removal of moisture. So same size, quote unquote, compressor we move, remove more moisture than the air conditioner with that same compressor in it. And so, first of all, they're not removing enough moisture. Second of all, their air volume that the machine delivers is probably half the amount that's needed for the proper turns within the space. So they get stratification. You get stratification oh, okay. in a pool oh, room. Buddy, I, I can talk about that. <laughs> and yeah, and you now just don't you, have enough power. You don't, you don't have flushing of the windows. You don't have air getting to all the spaces. And now you've got microclimates the that disaster is happening. Zone. The breathing zone. The breathing all. zone, <laughs> getting to the swimmers. Oh, all yeah. no, of no, that. You're speaking my language. And so w when you, you look at those fundamental differences, that's why an air conditioner doesn't even have a prayer's chance of successfully maintaining the environment within that pool facility. It's not designed to do that work. Okay, so I have two uh, final questions here. Number one, for the audience, maybe they're an operator, maybe they're a pool owner, a YMCA director, facilities person, or an engineer who is potentially doing an auditorium uh, replacement or anything. What is your recommendation as a pool dehumidification expert I know you're a manufacturer, but how do you recommend they go about making sure that their next unit, whether it's a new one or a replacement one, is sized properly for their pool? Well, the, the dehumidification community has worked with our engineering society, the American Society of Heating, Ventilating, Air Conditioning Engineers, ASHRAE, and we have detailed the sizing of a pool environment. And so, first of all, the technical uh, engineers on this call they need to go to the ASHRAE handbook and find out this or call up any of the manufacturers and, and we guide them through it. But you have to calculate the load first. And the load I'm talking about is moisture load. I have find very few pools that once you've sized the moisture load, the air conditioning load is more. That is just absolutely not happening unless you have a glass domed, uh, all glass structure. And there are a couple of them out well, there. Hey. I've seen, I've swam in one, and I got to tell you, as pretty as it was, it was miserable to swim in because and, and there's, there's a lot obvious of glare reason. and <laughs> a yeah, lot of reasons from a swimmer's that. perspective. Yeah, well, but okay, then so so we we need to, to size the moisture load, and once you have that and you know the piece of equipment has the ability to remove that amount of moisture, I wanted to say you're 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 more than halfway home. Now mm -hmm. you you want to find all the systems that reclaim the most energy deliver the, the appropriate ventilation air and do all the things uh, that the, the thing, and, and it's it's really duct design comes into this play, which is not manufacturer, that's the engineer contractor. That's where I come in. <laughs> that's where I come in. I help engineers just like you do to make sure that the air, once it's coming from the unit, I don't know how to size a unit, but every time we've worked with you or with any of the other manufacturers, our purpose is to help engineers aim the air in the correct directions. Correct. I leave the sizing to you guys as long as you're giving the right quality of air through the duct, I help engineers aim it. Um, so 
the, the final question I have, and first of all, thank you again for being on this video. The final question I have is, is a pool dehumidifier able to improve the air quality by itself? By itself, it's a major component, but it is a component. The duct design has to be correct. We have to take a look at uh, the uh, chemical release, the chloramine release, and make sure that we're getting. And so the, the industry's kind of turned itself around in the last five years and are, are recommending these low exhaust systems. And that's a whole nother video by itself, but it's this Source combination. Capture, everybody, the evacuator. <laughs> <It's> the, <Yeah. laughs> the combination of the right size HVAC and dehumidifier, I call it the HVACD, the right design ductwork, the right ventilation load, and the source capture. We do all that correctly. These environments are great. Mm -hmm. Do screw up any one of them, yeah. you're gonna have a problem. And then Arenda being on the water side of things, um, there's similar parameters that you want secondary systems like an ozone, properly sized ozone or UV to help with that, you have to have proper chlorination, you have to have proper filtration, proper chemistry, but it's a system. And that's the point I wanted to hear from an expert, not just my opinion, because I write about it all the time, but uh, it really is a system. And I've seen very successful natatoriums that don't have the state of the art anything. They just have it properly designed and it gets the job done. So Keith, any final comments? Uh, I'm really grateful for your time. Anything you want to add before we go? No, the, the one thing that I always uh, in, enjoy when somebody says, uh, hey, how, how do you dehumidify a pool room? I always remind them, you never dehumidify a pool room because the moisture is always releasing. So what we're doing is designing a system to deliver the air at the key elements of the space on a continuous basis. I love it. And collecting energy and keeping costs as low as possible, because at the end of the day, uh, operators here know this, especially if you're on the finance side of a YMCA or a health club or a university. After personnel, your, busy, your biggest expense uh, on an auditorium is heating and air conditioning, or Correct. I should say dehumidification. Correct. Well, Keith, this has been Keith Corson, the president of Desert Air. They're a manufacturer of high-end, uh, well, I shouldn't say high-end, I should just say there's not that many of them. So dehumidifiers for indoor pools, and you also do uh, your you know, indoor agronomy. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. They, they do dehumidification. You can check them out. I'll have the website in the links below. Thank you so much, Keith, for being here, and we will be recording a few more videos for the audience. Thanks, Very everybody. Very good. Thank you, Eric. Have a great day.